One that was a little bit different starting off this week in my weekly planner. I've been playing around a little bit, trying some ideas. Uh, welcome, I'm Annette Green and I am working in my vintage black planner from Elizabeth Craft Designs. I am doing a weekly series, weekly of 2023 of my life. I take one page per week and document something that I've done that week. Sometimes it's not very exciting. Sometimes it's kind of fun and different or a trip or something. Um, but we are all the way up here on week 20, what? 20, 24. So this is my page. I have all these pages pre-cut just on some fairly neutral paper. And I'm going to be building on this one. If you'd like to check out previous week's videos, of course, I have a playlist. It's called Week by Week, and you can go all the way back to the beginning if you like. So uh, let's get started with my idea for this week, and you saw me painting. Normally, I would have my photos already. I do not yet. I'm going to do it a little different, like I said. Uh, but I have to say, before I ever get started into this week, uh, that it was one of those weeks where I was terribly busy and then it dawned on me like, oh, I need to, I need to do something to document. So um, that is part of the process when you do a week by week memory keeping journal like this. Uh, sometimes you have to go looking for something to do, something different. And if it isn't something to do that's, you know, exciting or different, just look in your daily life for something to document. But I did know that Eric Carl's exhibit was going to be at the local museum. So I just took an hour out of my day on Friday and I went down there and checked it out. And it was really cute, very cool. I have some pictures that I will print out, but I thought it would be fun to do a little Eric Carl style, maybe background or border or some kind of treatment on the page. And so that's why I was playing around with paint. And if you don't know who Eric Carl is, uh, either you don't have children or grandchildren or <laughs> I don't know everyone should know who Eric Carl is this is his very distinct style this is the very hungry caterpillar right right there but this is a book I got at the library right after going to the museum because I wanted to know how did he do his art they did a little explaining of that in the exhibit but um, this book is wonderful because it really does talk all about his life which was very very interesting uh, and then it has a great section right here on how he does his art. So it's, it's a lot easier than you think. So I thought, well, I'm going to play around. Now, I didn't go to this kind of depth with <laughs> some of my stuff that you'll see. Um, certainly, you can take a lot of time and make some really cool textures and use a lot of different colors of paint. Uh, but I kept it very simple because that's just how I roll. And especially if I'm trying to do something every week. Uh, every week can't be a masterpiece. Sometimes it just has to be simple, but pretty. Okay, so what did Eric Carl do? He would paint on tissue paper. Now, he said he got his tissue paper uh, in one video that I watched from an uh, art supply store. However, he said you could also use just gift wrap, which I didn't have any of that either, like white. So I grabbed some tracing paper instead. It certainly wasn't anything fancy. It's something that I've had forever, forever. And it's just regular tracing paper. So it's a little bit thinner than vellum, which you've seen me use. And I have cut the sheets in half just to, because I know I'm not going to use a whole bunch. Uh, but you know, it's just translucent enough to get the same kind of effect. So what I did, now it looked like Eric Carl used Sometimes he used watercolor, sometimes he used acrylic paint. The video that I watched, he used acrylic paint. But I did grab my watercolors. I just had this little tin. I just grabbed it very quickly. There's not that many colors in here. And gave it a try. And so it's all crispy, crunchy, and you see where I've cut away something here. Um, but I used diff different colors, some yellows, some orange, a little bit of red. Just made some squiggles. You could use all kinds of like tools and... Uh, Eric Carl used a little piece of rug, like scrap remnant of rug that he would rub or press into his paints to make a texture. It's really cool. Uh, so I did do that. I like that. Uh, I tried alcohol markers, which was also kind of cool. This is greens and yellows and some bluish teal. 
So that worked nicely. And then I just grabbed some water-based markers. So alcohol markers, water-based markers, and just did a bunch of squiggly squirrelies, <laughs> squiggly squirrelies, squiggly swirlies onto the same kind of paper. So that was kind of cool too. And then I had to try acrylic because that's what he does. I'm grabbing it back here because I don't think it's dry yet. Uh, acrylic paint now acrylic paint maybe he thins his down with water quite a bit but i can't see through this at all so i don't think i'm going to use that it made it very opaque i even tried a lighter color but i can't see through that either and i feel like that's the key that makes that eric carl pleasing look is to be able to see through a little bit and what i'm talking out with the overlap uh, it's it's not super evident but it's it's here you can see it so he cuts these pieces and he overlaps and can you see the overlap there you can actually see through this layer to that layer back there and so forth it's just in little places here and there but it just gives it that really cool kind of look and so that's why I prefer to stick with um, you know, some of these water-based or even the alcohol, but something that allows us to still be a little show through. This one is also kind of the same color value, but this is watercolor that you saw me doing at the top. It's still a little bit damp, so I'm going to let that sit. Uh, but what I want to do with these, and I've already done a few over here, is I want to cut some circles. Uh, again, I want to keep it simple. I don't you know, need to be cutting out shapes of animals and putting it all back together. Um, I just want to maybe try a little border treatment or something maybe all the way around the page. I don't know. And so I thought, well, different size circles could be fun. So as you can see, I'm not drawing a circle and I'm not punching a perfect circle. Uh, the more irregular, actually, the better, in my opinion. So I'm just eyeballing a circle, roughly. Okay, and so I'm going to continue to do that. I want to get this dry and do some more of that too because I want a little more blue as another color option. Okay, and while I cut up some more circles, I'll just remind you, if you were not here last week, I said at the end that um, this week at the, at the end of this video, I'm going to share some 12 by 12 scrapbook layouts blast from the past for me because I haven't done those in years and years and I know a lot of you still do them because I go to these crops you know and I see everybody's doing 12 by 12 layouts but me I'm doing little mini albums <laughs> and I'm doing travelers notebooks and things but everybody seems to still be doing the big 12 by 12 spreads so I'm going to pull those out some of my favorites and share those at the end. Okay, that's fun. I'm getting some some good. I need some more red, so I'll cut some more of that. Anyway, I'll get some more circles ready, and then we'll come back and see how they look on my page. Okay, this is kind of fun. I'm just placing these. I don't really know for sure what's going to happen. I'm going to overlap eventually. Um, I'm going to use some matte medium to stick this down and I think this is what I'm gonna do I don't know what my photo I mean I have my photos but I haven't printed them I don't really have a plan there but I like how I don't have every surface area covered in the corners like it's not gonna be a solid border uh, I definitely have more to work with over here but I kind of like this so I'm gonna take a quick picture because I don't want to lose, you know, what's going on here. And then I'll start gluing these down. Okay, I've got my nonstick craft sheet down here. I'm going to grab the nearest matte medium I have, which is this Dina Wakely medium, gel medium, soft gel matte medium. And I do have a paintbrush. That's good. And I do have a little cup here. Uh, and I will talk just for a little bit. Eric Carl, he puts the glue on the back of the tissue. All right, I'll do that over here. I don't know what the back is. I think that's, I don't know. Gosh, I like this side. Uh, anyway, um, a lot of you have come to, oh, look at that, Pfft, curls right up tight. 
And I watched him do it, and his did not curl at all. I don't know what kind of glue he used, but that just, I thought when he was doing it, I thought, oh, how's that not curling right up? Oh, see how cool. Okay, so we see through the page. We still see the color. And of course, I am going off the edge because that's what I always say to do, right? Um, much more interesting. Just wait till you see when we trim all this excess off how cool that's going to look. Uh, anyway, I started to talk about my sale. I'm going to have to fight these curlies. Um, I've been having a de-stash kind of sale over on Facebook. And a lot of you have joined me over there. Oh, see, that kind of smears a little. Uh, let's see, this was the water-based marker. That's why. Okay, so you have to be a little careful. You need a baby wipe. I have that baby wipe because everything that I would have touched from there forward would have gotten red fingerprints on it. Anyway, back to the sale. Um, I have sold everything I've listed. I, I had one week where I listed a bunch of stuff and a lot of it sold pretty quickly, but I had a couple things left from it. And then last week I did round two and sold a bunch of stuff. And then all of that went and even more, the, like the two things that were left over from round one, uh, they got snatched up as well. So there's absolutely nothing listed. <laughs> in the group right now, which is great for me. But if you happen to go there and go looking, and I'll, I'll link it below, um, and you see nothing for sale, that's exactly why. So I'm gonna need a little bit to list some more things in the coming weeks. And let me tell you, it takes a lot of effort and time and all that to, you know, first of all, dig out all the stuff that I wanna sell and then take a picture or decide on the price or decide how I want to bundle them together, list them. Uh, you know, that's just a little bit of a process there in Facebook for listing anyway. And then of course the questions that I get, I got to stop and answer. <laughs> so it's a lot. Uh, let's see, where'd this one go? I got an extra one of those. Okay. Well, I'm going to stop chattering and I'm going to get the rest of these on here then I'll come back and show you how it looks. Okay, welcome to the mess that is my craft table. Uh, I just was editing this photo and I thought, well, maybe I should share this, it's kind of interesting. So it's difficult to um, take a photo in an art gallery or in an exhibit because it's usually behind glass and there's a lot of lights and there's a ton of glare. Um, so I am going into my photo and I am actually taking out all the little shine spots <laughs> that I see of the lights and actually I, there was a little image of me in there reflecting which I have taken out. Um, I'm just using Photoshop elements here to use this rubber stamp tool they call it to go in there and take out oops these little glare shiny spots. So I take a sampling from over there and I just click it where I want to cover up something that I don't want, like this little guy right here. I hope you can see any of this. Anyway, that's what I do. I just take a minute because, you know, it's a bee. It's a great photo. Uh, and I just don't want all those shine spots in there. So that's just something that I do. So you can really appreciate it. <laughs> there I am. See me? See me right there? Uh, this is before and this is after. So not bad. I'm happy. All right. It's been a little bit. I've had it pressing under a dictionary. Well, because uh, it started to curl up a little bit, but it was dry before I did that, of course. Uh, now I want to trim this away, and I'm just going to use a blade rather than scissors and a cutting mat so I get a nice, clean, straight cut. See? That's cool. That's fun. All right, let me finish this up. Okay, and before I get too much further, I'm just going to repunch those holes that I covered up with the tissue with my good old crocodile punch. 
Uh, but I wanted to show you really quickly some other collage pieces. So if you ever wanted to try this technique and maybe you didn't necessarily want to put it on a planner page, um, maybe some other things you could do. Okay, that looks good. And I'm probably going to ink the edges there, but uh, I wanted to show you these really quick. These were some things that I did in what they called the fodder school. Um, just a fun collage technique kind of class. So I made little note cards and I made just some, this is watercolor paper, but just some practice pieces and cut them up. Uh, this is all layered collage. Tissue, some paper. Uh, very fun, but basically the same kind of technique. Okay, so here's how we're looking. I inked the edges with a little dark brown ink, and I've got my photos ready, as you saw. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of color going on here, so we're going to have to mat these photos for sure. And I'm just going to use either a really dark brown or black. Uh, but I've decided on these three main photos, and then this was also a photo, but I just fussy cut it out because it's cute. And I think it's going to go up there. i got to put my 24 somewhere. Um, so it's, it's coming together. I'm going to have just a small little journaling place here uh, or somewhere. And, and also, did you notice this photo? It's not a rectangle. I never do that. But I thought, well, why not? Because it was in the frame in such a way and the angle that I took the shot. Um, I couldn't square it off. So I'm going to just do that for something different and fun this time. But the page is really starting to take shape, so I just need to get some black photo mats and plan out a little journaling place and get my number 24 ready. Okay, I have my photo mats on my photos, and I have this little guy, and I haven't decided if he's going to go on black or not yet, but I want to get my numbers cut out, and so I took a scrap of one of these here watercolor tissue pieces, and I glued some onto just white cardstock. So you could really see that color. And I pulled out my stitched letters and numbers that I always use. And that's what I'm going to cut my 24 out of and see how that looks. Alrighty. And I went ahead and got everything down here. Uh, I decided not to put black behind my little guy here and I have him going off the page, of course. Uh, did not do any kind of uh, journaling tag. Instead, I wrote right on the page with a black Sharpie, which worked really nicely over that collage tissue. Uh, and I put a little something here and here. So my page is done. Super easy, super fun. I really enjoyed making that one. Got a little messy in the process, but that's part of the fun. Uh, so I thank you for watching this part of it, and if you want to stick around and get a little laugh at some older scrapbooks of mine, that's what I'm going to do next. Otherwise, I'll see you next week for week 25. Okay, I went to go grab my 12 by 12 scrapbooks and then I found some of like my very first scrapbooks like ever. <laughs> so I thought that would be fun to share really quick. Uh, this is a literal scrapbook as it says here and the pages are like, uh, gosh, I don't even know what that is. It's like construction paper. <laughs> And this is my trip to Europe in 1985. So perhaps some of you watching were never born yet, but <laughs> this, is, uh, this is really something. There are actual um, hankies in here. And they're, they look like they're starting to get a little, I don't know, rusty looking. I don't know, some age is starting to show, but I bought these somewhere. Okay, I'm getting sidetracked, sorry. So this is my very first scrapbook ever. Look at, I hand wrote everything. The pictures are just stuck on there, probably with um, rubber cement. Look at this, Viva la France. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> oh gosh, this was a wonderful, wonderful trip. And I was all of uh, 19, I think. It was right after high school, just when I started uh, community college and they had a study, uh, travel abroad, like like humanities program. <laughs> anyway, oh my gosh, I had to show you that really quick. Here's another hilarious one. How many of you have did this back in the day? This is a regular uh, three ring binder notebook from the office supply store that we used to, you know, take fabric and batting and cover it and then, you know, glue this board with more batting and fabric. There's some hot glue peeking out right there. <laughs> oh gosh. 
and then the photos oh my goodness so cute and funny these are you know look at oh boy boy oh boy these are pictures of jamie oh just hilarious anyway i just thought i'd share it these are just regular avery page protectors that's how i used to do it i'm sure you guys did it too <laughs> just hilarious anyway i won't show you that whole thing but that's i'm sure that brings back a lot of memories for a lot of you now we'll jump ahead to an actual 12 by 12 scrapbook this says uh well it said 2006 which is on the floor now but anyway um there are just a couple of things i wanted to show you in here i mean this is very familiar i'm sure to a lot of you i want to go through every page but it's just it's just bringing me back you know like Remember when I did that one page in the planner where I said, remember the days when we used to cut out the photos? Like right out of the side of the people. I used to do it. I did it again. Uh, anyway, these are fun. This is back when I used to um, be a close to my heart consultant and I would design pages and teach the class how to make the pages. Um, I would sometimes hand journal, but sometimes I would do it on the computer, which was always kind of fun um chipboard letters and the negative from the chipboard letters you know just lots of fun i was trying to find one in particular that was a favorite that was a favorite i like that one this was back in the day uh when fussy not fussy cuts but die cuts first began in my life anyway with the uh, does anyone remember the revolution machine and they had little tiny square dies uh, they first started with that press kind of version, and then they came out with an electric machine or a crank machine. <laughs> I had them all, but yeah, that, that little frog came from that. Um, let's see, there was a really... Oh, this one I wanted to show only because it's an idea, you know, it's a little inspirational idea where I took a photo of Jamie and I went into Photoshop and I, I cut around her. I don't know if you can see this with the glare, but I did cut her out of the main photo well, copied it and then brought her back in but I ghosted back the layer that she was on so can you see that how she's like a ghost you can see through her body to the stuff behind her in the photo so that was kind of fun um, so many of these layouts were from close to my heart some of the how-to books that they used to have uh, this was just a plain piece of paper back here and we stamped and sponged and did all kinds of things to it to make a fall background. Of course, torn paper was a big thing, and the paper flowers, uh, brads, um, fabric, or ribbon, a lot of ribbon back in the day. This one is from, oh gosh, 2010. And these, believe it or not, these little clip labels are still uh, available last I looked uh, from close to my heart and they're wonderful I made my little labels on uh, the computer of course so they look nice and they all look the same uh, but gosh there we go with the buttons and the ribbon and the sewing on the page chipboard letters um, chipboard frames here this has been stamped and I did a little drop shadow with the pen uh, gosh, back in the day, I really took a lot of time. That would take me a long time to do that one. And I think I even made a video way, way, way back, but I may not have that anymore. Again, these layouts are from one of the Close to My Heart books, but I just sort of took it to the next level and I guess leveled it up, as they say. But again, you see these embellishments and this metal and buttons and all the things that we used to use back then. I love this page because it shows... Suki growing up through the years. A couple of fun techniques on this spread. We went to Animal Kingdom with Jamie's class. Um, I, I like this little treatment here. This is kind of fun uh, where I took the two photos that had photo mats, uh, but before mounting them onto the photo mats, I punched with a circle punch and then did that to the top and the bottom one and then put buttons in between. Just it's gotten fun. And this here on the corners as well with the buttons. And then the same treatment down here with the buttons. Just just something different, kind of fun, you know? This layout is a favorite, and I did not design it. This was by Sherry Tazi, who was my, you know, up the chain from me in the Close to My Heart team. And she was amazing. And uh, she did this for like a team class. We all got together 
and had like a day where we got together and created and she designed this layout and she would work through it with us and then of course we all took it back to our customers and taught it but chipboard letters with you know this this gradation of stamping ink and then embossing it looks like we use maybe glossy accents on some of the details down here it's really cool I'm not sure if you can see that staples here uh, this flap we had with some journaling it was it was quite an impressive layout that she designed Another fun one that worked out nicely with Jamie's colors on the first day to middle school. Of course, here we are with the stickers and the buttons and the ribbon and the metal. Uh, another fun one. And then, of course, Halloween. Look at, look at yours truly. Can you see it? We were zombies. <laughs> that was just a fun layout. These are chipboard letters that have been inked all blobby with green and then we did some stamping with some splotchy black color pretty fun we used to have a neighbor in Florida that had a Halloween party every year and we always dressed up it was great all right this is it says on the spine DC as in Washington DC Savannah and New York City so I kept one album for uh, multiple vacations but I don't want to go through all of that I just wanted to show you what I did with this one it's one layout and I do have a video on this I'm pretty sure I'll link it below uh, these are those flip flaps I'm always talking about I use the little ones a lot now and not the big ones but they have them in all different sizes from close to my heart so this was our trip to New York which was like a 10 day trip I think um, yeah I mean we we had a great time and it spent so much time there and did so many things but it's a two-page spread that entire time and this is how it can happen with these uh, flip flaps so you can see this is a little shorter one this is I'm not gonna be able to get it all in here this is a longer one over here I've got all kinds of memorabilia uh, tickets our plane tickets maps tucked into pockets stickers um, so this is all one and then we have this flip flap I showed you at the beginning and then over here is where a lot goes on I gotta make some room here okay. and I know that the glare is not good I'm sorry actually this must go I don't even remember how this goes you guys <laughs> so much going on here okay so we have this page here skyline we got the Metro cards we got our Lion King thing um, and then this one opens out and then this one opens out can you still see everything this was um, when the towers shortly after the towers and then they were starting to build a new uh, World Trade Center and there was a like a mock-up of how it was gonna look and of course it's all done now but this was back in that day but see how this folds out and then we have this that folds up and this that folds down and this that folds over and this that folds up and this one goes that way and this one should go down but it goes up <laughs> so this this is just completely loaded this is one of my favorite uh, things I ever did in scrapbooking so I had to show you that one all right this one is 2013 just really quick I'm just skipping around I've done them for every year since Jamie was born but I can't possibly show you all of them uh, this is one of my favorite layouts of Jamie it's just a one page 12 by 12 um, I made this particularly for Graphic 45 when I made their design team the very first time um, when they asked us to make samples for the booth at back then CHA or Creativation. So uh, this one I'm very proud of. It's made with the botanical tea paper and, and of course Jamie took these pictures of herself. Just beautiful. Um, let's see, we'll skip ahead because this was momentous. This is when I attended Ranger U. It was the last one they ever had, Ranger University. Uh, big thrill big I was a huge fan of Tim Holtz back in the day so I went to the Ranger office and had classes for a week and it was just fantastic and I made friends that I still keep in touch with today here's another one of those flip flaps I met people from all over the world uh, didn't finish journaling but <laughs> you know sometimes you just don't uh, here's a layout that has burlap some burlap down here we got some chipboard and the banner and all kinds of stuff happening here that's pretty fun layout I'm um, pretty sure this was close to my heart paper back then this was a close to my heart convention but you know this is again just like I do now in my planners 
Uh, this is from the agenda. I kept that and put that in the scrapbook. This was my name tag. Um, that's why I am always constantly gathering things. This was from something. I don't remember what. Maybe something in a store. Maybe it was a stamp. Um, but yeah, and this is all stamping throughout here. So a lot of times it's not background paper that you see. It's actual stamping to make a pattern that I want. Another favorite layout of Jamie. This was when Jamie was, gosh, not even one yet. And this is Graphic 45's Mother Goose collection. Uh, again, another sample that I took a lot of time to make because it was going in the CHA booth for Graphic 45 back then. So that was very sweet. I even did some stitching by hand <laughs> with some, some thick th kind of thread, I remember. It's not on the machine, but I had to poke all those holes and stitch all those by hand and fussy cut out little Mr. Humpty Dumpty there. <laughs> it was a fun one. And of course, masculine layouts too. This was probably, was it Father's Day? Oh no, it's Paul's birthday. That's almost 10 years ago. Yep. Epoxy letters. Remember those? We all use those. Stickers, chipboard, some more Halloween fun. I'm not sure why this is in this scrapbook, but this is me. Uh, I believe it's in here because on that particular year, I was doing designs for, we had a little group of us with Linda Ledbetter and Susan Mostak and a couple other gals and um, we had the Compendium of Curiosities that was a lot of things that Tim Holtz uh, used or a, maybe a technique that he had in the book and so we would take them month by month, week by week, I can't even remember. Anyway, this one has a lot of metal embellishment and of course Tim's ribbons. Uh, back then he had these letters. Uh, I mean, it's just all Tim Holt stuff. So that was a fun one. And this is like one of those, I forget what they call these, but I did rub-ons on it, uh, like an old fashioned photo frame. And this is just back here loosely because I don't know why, I guess it's around that time. Another one of my favorites that also was in the Graphic 45 booth of Jamie. Um, got her cute little eyeliner going there and her haircut. Uh, and this was steampunk debutante, I think. I think. You guys can correct me if I'm wrong. A lot of hot air balloons and the gears and all this stuff. Uh, definitely a favorite. Okay, one more. This is just called the Green Family History. This was something I submitted in a contest in 2010, close to my heart, convention 2010 album contest. Uh, they gave us stipulations what had to be in the entry and I followed all those and I put it in the front here. Anyway, I decided on doing a family history just because it's something I had never done. So uh, I would have to say of all of the scrapbooks that I've ever made, this is the one that I'm most proud of. And probably if there were a fire, this would be the one I would grab. And um, it basically is a very, every layout in here is very, very involved. Uh, probably each one took me a full day to complete. Here again are the uh, flip flaps. But I took the time to interview my in-laws and ask them all kinds of questions about how they met, their timeline. There's some old money here. I put the timeline down here with little um, hits as to you know what happened in their time together when they met. Uh, mostly this will be about my father-in-law, Andy. And then it moves into my mother-in-law, who is Japanese and now has since passed. Saiko Momose was her name. Uh, then Green, of course. But uh, gosh, she had these wonderful pictures of her father. Um, I don't know if this was her mother and her mom's sister, so her aunt. But uh, gosh, the Certificate of Marriage, uh, the American National Red Cross, uh, some sort of certificate that she received when she came to America. Uh, this is a sweet little love letter. I photocopied and made very, very small when um, she would write to him when he had to go back to the States. And there's the actual envelope that I reduced small as well. There's metal embellishments on here. There's a bunch of these black and white photos of her and uh, Japan and just, I don't know, this is 
I'm so glad I did it because it took a long time, but it was well worth all the effort because now I have this treasure that I can look back on. Uh, and then we move into Paul, my husband. Let's see how cute he was, this little boy. And again, I've used the flip flaps. I was very fond of those. I use them all the time. Uh, but this is his journey growing up and then how we met. And there's a little story about that. <laughs> and then there's me. Uh, this is high school. Look at that big fluffy permed dark hair I used to have. Gosh, I miss those days. Uh, but yeah, chipboard, stickers, stamping on chipboard, and then um, this overlay on top of our photo had like this beautiful swirly pattern in it, and I just put it right over the top of our wedding photo. Uh, this talks about me and then meeting uh, Paul and how all that happened. And then this has a little pullout over here with a little timeline of my own. Uh, I had to cut the page protector to get that in there. And then we go on to uh, Jamie on a familiar path. And so we have another little hinged thing with Jamie's timeline. It's, you know, it's all documented there. Uh, Jamie growing up through the years and how she's coming into herself as an artist and such. And then finally, the evolution brings us right back around to um, what a wonderful artist Jamie has started to develop into. This was back in her uh, anime days, very fond of that. Um, but now, of course, anyone who knows me and follows me knows that Jamie is a very successful, currently, book illustrator for children's books. So definitely full circle there. And then there's just some memorabilia stuck in the back. So wow, that was a mouthful. I hope you liked that. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. I did. That was kind of fun. I got to go put all those back now. They're super heavy. Uh, but I thank you for joining me again this week. I know this was a long one. Thanks for hanging in there. There's my beautiful, colorful Eric Carl page. That might be one of my favorite ones. I like color. You guys know that. Okay. Thank you so much. I will see you next week. Take care.